We ask you that you have mercy upon us once more, Lord Jesus. We are not here for ourselves, O oh God, but to honor you, O oh God, in spirit and in truth, Lord Jesus. Father, you carry us through on one week, Lord God, and you wake us up to see yet another week, Lord Jesus. And we are grateful and we are thankful, Lord Jesus. Without you, we are nothing, Lord God. When we think about where you have brought us from and where we are today, oh God, we have to give you praise, glory, and honor, Lord Jesus. Father, today, oh God, as we come before you, oh God, we ask you to bless us. We ask you to sanctify us, Lord God. Every word, every song, Lord Jesus, every scripture that is done today, Lord God, let it be done unto your glory and to your honor, Lord Jesus. Father, I bring the sick and afflicted before you this morning, oh God. We ask you, oh God, to touch them, Lord Jesus. Let your healing touch flow over them this morning, oh God. Father, those that are seeking comfort to this morning, oh God. Father, we know closer than our brother you are to us, Lord God. Who can we depend on but you, Lord Jesus? Father, oh God, as we gather today, oh God, let us come with joy in our heart, oh God. Let us come with a peace that passes all understanding, Lord Jesus. Father, for we look to you, oh God, who is the finished author and finish of our faith, oh God. Father, lead and guide us, oh God. Take full control of this service, oh God. Bless the moderator, Lord Jesus. Father, bless the pastor this morning, oh God. Father, oh God, we pray that you will touch him, Lord Jesus. For the devil is out and about, Lord God, like a roaring lion, oh God, to, to devour your people, Lord Jesus. But Father God, we know God, with you by our side, oh God, we can overcome each and everything, Lord Jesus. So Father, touch us, oh God. Awaken your Holy Spirit within us this morning, oh God. Father, where we will be without you, Lord Jesus. Father, bless everyone that's here, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us, Lord Jesus. Father, for we all come with a need to the Lord Jesus. I need to hear from you, Lord Jesus. Father, oh God, feed us with your holy word this morning, oh God. Father, as we lift our cup up to heaven, fill us up, Lord Jesus. We're empty vessels waiting to be filled, Lord Jesus. Anoint us, Lord Jesus. Take full control of this service, Lord God. Father, I said, be slain this morning, oh God. Father, oh God, we pray for everyone that's listening, oh God. Let your word go forth this morning, Lord Jesus. And touch somebody, Lord Jesus. Father, wake them up from this sleep they're sleeping, Lord Jesus. Let them know in such a time like this that they need to draw closer to you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we need you, Lord Jesus. Father, have your divine way, Lord Jesus. Whatever we fail to ask of you this morning, oh God, we know you will grant it us, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. These are your mercies that I ask in no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The enemy has no, yes. no, praise the Lord, no power over the church this morning because the church is alive and well. Praise the Lord.
the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the tongue is The rod is rocky. But hold on, my children. Hold on a little longer. Because God promised that he will deliver. Praise the Lord. He will deliver. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My Jesus, for in the oil and the wine.
worship you all.
bless him this morning. Praise God. We pray that God will have full preeminence in your lives. My lives, I want to greet social media this morning. I want to greet all the administer, ministerial staff of True Light, all the officers, presidents, and those who are absent. We pray that God bless them upon your life today. Uh, that God will continue to bless you and strengthen you. Uh, if it's ever a time we need to know God for yourself, it's now. If it's ever a time you've got to be determined, it's now. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because the plan of the enemy is to destroy us. Amen. The plan of the enemy is to put this church to silence. But I refuse to allow the enemy to let my spirit go cold, or for me to turn away from the God that I am serving. Amen. I love you too much to fail him now. Amen. Praise God. I said I love him too much to fail him now. Uh, this morning I will be reading from the book of James. Uh, James, a servant of God, James chapter 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that he may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you love wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and, and beareth not. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Don't ask and you're wavering. Don't ask and waver, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think it, that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable. In all his ways, not only some, but in all his ways, uh, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, uh, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withered the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grass, and the grace of the fashion of it perished. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, uh, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Praise God. And I will stop at verse 13. So the text for today will be from James chapter 1 from 1 to verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. 
Shall we praise the Lord then? Praise God. We glorify the Lord today. He is worthy to be praised. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father God, we glorify you. We pray that you will take over right now, Lord God. Those that are watching by means of uh, social media, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you may strengthen them. Those that are under the ear of my voice, I pray, Lord God Almighty, that they will be strengthened and that they will receive a blessing, Lord God Almighty. Father God, we're inviting your presence here right now, Lord God, in the hearts and the spirit of your believers. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your words go forth with convincing power right now, Lord God. We trample and we crumble, oh God Almighty, Mighty and we paralyze every plans of the enemy, Lord God. Father God, every demonic force, Lord God, every diabolic spirit, oh God, every spirit that is not of you, Lord God Almighty, oh God, the Holy Ghost, take authority over it right now, Lord God. We saturate this place right now with the anointing. We saturate this place right now with the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh God Almighty, life stream. Oh God Almighty, we send the Holy Ghost right through here right now wherever you may be you may be in the prison we send out the Holy Ghost right there you may be in the hospital and the hospital bed but oh God we send the Holy Ghost there right now you may be in a state of confusion but we send the Holy Ghost there right now and somebody just praise God with me here oh God Almighty every family that experiencing difficulties right now we send the Holy Ghost in that family right now every financial situation we send the Holy Ghost there right now. In the name of Jesus, every job seeker, we send the Holy Ghost there right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I would like to leave a topic on your mind today. And the topic that I would like to leave with you today, profiting from my trials. Profiting from my trials. Many of us don't like trials and we look at trials and the temptation that come our way as being too much, too great, too often. But James affirm us that after the trial, there's going to be a payday. Each and every one of us, which I don't think is too many of us, we have savings account. Some of us have stocks. We have bond. We have blue chips. We have gold chips. You name it. Uh, uh, investor invests. And they're looking for a return. So that's the reason why they are investing. So trials are of outward circumstances. So the trials that we're going through today, it's an outward circumstances. So let's get that. Your trials, it's an outward circumstances. Why your trial is an outward circumstances? Because you can see your trial. You can feel your trial. If you have somebody keep on throwing the chair at you, you can see the chair. If you have somebody keep on pushing you and trying to pick a fight with you, you can see that individual. So your trials are outward circumstances. Your trials come to test you in the flesh. So it's an outward circumstances. Uh, it's also bring conflict. So when you're talking about trials, you're talking about conflict. And when you're talking about conflict, it's also attached with suffering. So you have trials, you have conflict. So your conflict is uh, your outward circumstances. Sometimes we have conflict among our brethren. Sometimes we have conflict with our co-workers. Sometimes we have conflict in the family. So it's an outward conflict. It's an outward circumstance. Then we have suffering and trouble. Trials are not pleasant. And many be extremely grievous. So many of our trials are extremely grievous. Many of our trials, they are hard to bear. So therefore, a child of God doesn't 
like to be a child. A child of God doesn't like to feel pain. But I'm getting there. I come to tell you this morning that when the trials come, it's a never, nevertheless, a true born again Christian will experience trial. I must go through trials, but every believer must look at each trial as an opportunity for rejoicing. So every trial that you go through, you must look to them as an opportunity for you to start to rejoice in the God of your salvation. So we praise the Lord here. So we praise the Lord. So we praise the Lord. So your trials come for you to rejoice. So when you go through your trials and your temptation, don't blame nobody why they're picking on you. Don't blame nobody why they're picking on me. Because in this, there is something that awaits you. Every trial that come your way, every temptation that you overcome, every temptation that you walk over, you're increasing on your profit of your trials. So we praise the Lord. So every time you look at sin and you overcome sin, and every time you shun the very appearance of sin, you are increasing your return. So we praise the Lord. So we praise the Lord. Oh God Almighty. So you got to understand that troubles and difficulties are a tool which will find and purify our faith in God. So your trials and your temptation that you're going through. Yes, there are tools that refine us. Oh God Almighty, they're just here to refine us and purify us. Oh God, of our faith uh, into a product and patient and endurance. The aim of testing is not to destroy or to afflict, but it's to purge us. Oh God Almighty, it's not here to destroy you. It is not here to tear you apart. But it's here to purge us. I look at my finger. And I got a ring on my finger. And it's a gold ring. But I can assure you that in the beginning, it wasn't like this. I can see some men mining the gold. They were dirty. They smell bad. They go through some extensive heat and the gold itself for it to process it got to go through the fire. So we praise the Lord. So God Almighty, that's why I said I'm with somebody so would get the fire and burn them with the Holy Ghost. You got to understand that when you're going through your trials, you got to know that it's refining you and it's putting profit on your trials. You gotta cash in on your trials. There is profit that is growing on my trial because every time the devil wanna say no, Jesus said yes. And every time the devil wants you to do things that you walk away from, Jesus said no. Oh, what would the devil wanna put you down? Mercy said, come on. So with joy, withdraw from the will of salvation. So we praise the Lord. So we praise the Lord. Oh, so the aim of testing is not to destroy, not to afflict, 
somebody when your best friend turned them back at you it's for your Christian maturity well I hope God Almighty when your friend start to talk about you it's for Christian maturity when your wife start to talk about you it's for your Christian maturity when your children and let me send your spouse when they don't understand you oh God and your person on the hope word way from my trials. Glory to God. Oh God. So you want to understand that brother Abraham when God told him he said Abraham I want you to offer up Isaac uh, the sacrifice. You got to understand that God will test you. God won't tempt you. Oh yes, 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 yes. So Abraham obeyed God, picked up his son Isaac, gave Isaac the wood to carry. Isaac said, Daddy, I saw the wood, I saw the knife, but Daddy, where is the sacrifice? Sometimes you are walking with some folks, and you are talking with some folks, and you don't know that you are the sacrifice. They're ready to kill you, and you don't know. But you are up shoulder to shoulder with them. And they know that they are walking with you. And they want to see you dead. They want to see you dead. But they don't do they know. They don't do they know. That at that point in time. Your God. That you were invested in trial. You see when the enemy tried to take you down. But when your ways please God. I said when your ways please Big up your chest. 
When you're feeling pain, stand up straight, say where. Well. Oh God Almighty. Last week, Sunday, I preached a message. I am wounded but not dead. And everything was alright. Oh God, but by Sunday evening, my God Almighty, 9 o'clock or 10 30. God said, I'm gonna test you now. And see if you're wounded, what you're gonna do. Oh God Almighty. And by 10 o'clock, my feet was like this. I couldn't go upstairs. I couldn't move. But thank God for a wife that stood by me. And I thought that she stood by me. She struggled at me. She hold me. And take me up the stairs. Oh God, I got a praying wife. Who get the olive oil and start to minister. Oh God, I'm the mother when I get up. Oh God, it seems like one of my legs is two in one. But I continue to say, I know that my redeemer is there. I know that there is a healing for the head in Israel. I know that my God is a healer. I know that my God is a deliverer. So we praise the Lord. He was wounded upon that cross. Blood was running. But he was given life. I am feeling pain. But I am preaching. Because you know what? Although I feel the pain. I still get up and I go to work and I work in the pain. So I'm gonna preach in the pain. I got to let the devil know that I am living what I am preaching. Shall we pray the Lord? Glory to God. Glory to God. So we have to stand fast under pressure and with the same with the staying power of God. Um, and that. When we stand under the power that turn, oh God, to adversities, oh God Almighty, into opportunity. So your adversities, when you stand with God, will turn it into opportunities. Stand in your adversities so that it will turn into opportunity. How do we praise God here? I'm talking about cashing in and your trials here. Oh God. We got to understand that uh, in verse 12 of James chapter 1, that's where we and our reveal and our prophet is where you profit from your trials. So our trial is our investment to gain eternal life. What did I say? I said our trials is our investment to gain eternal life. Shall we praise the Lord? But I also want you to understand that there are qualities that needed in trial. Now you have some folks when they're going through trials, they don't want to hear nobody talk to them. They don't want to deal with nobody, especially if we have the idea that we are right about the stuff that we're thinking. So they don't want nobody to talk to them. But during your trials, you got to have some qualities that display in your character that you're a child of God. And listen to what I said here. There are three things that we must display when we are going through our trials. According to James 1 and verse 19, we'll find that. So I want to look at we must swift to hear. What well, man we must swift to hear? When you're going through trials, you must swift to hear from God. You must swift to hear from somebody that will give you a good word of encouragement. When we're going through trials, we have itchy ears. We want somebody to encourage us in our weakness and our destructive way. But you need to hear. You need to listen. The way God is talking to you. And number two, you must slow to speak. Oh God, I live with some folks in the past. And I still know some folks. Anything go but my God, lip service is free. Words have no boundary. They tell you where to go and what to do and who you are. And 
and they take it all away from your great grandmother right up to the last throne of here on your head. Oh God Almighty, I tell you, your grievous words, huh? but you're more slow to speak huh? when you're going through your trial. Jesus, I take authority over that. We spill the blood. 
Hebrews chapter 12, from 2 to 3, we're talking about cashing in and our prophet, our profiting from our trials. So here, when you're going through trials, you got to endure. You got to endure. So here, what Hebrews 12, 2 and 3 said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and he despised the shame and sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, I said consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. Oh God Almighty. But James chapter 1 and verse 8, we learn, oh God, about the double-minded man that is unstable in all his way. So we don't want our need to be double-minded, but we need to cash in. We need to profit from our trials. Oh God Almighty, so here you find the double-minded man. So here what Philippians 2 from 5 to 8 declare, let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself. So when you're going through your trials, you can't tell yourself that it is me. Make yourself of no reputation. It's not me, I don't have to deal with them. But he make himself of no reputation. He left his eventual glory. Robe himself in flesh. Come and dwell among sinners like me. When they nailed him to the cross, my sin was there. Your sin was there. Can we praise God here? Let himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. So hear what that verse said now. And be found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. Oh God Almighty, what a God we serve. All of that so that we can profit from our trials. I am profiting today from my trials. I am profiting today from my trials. We're going to cash in. So hear what the word of God declared here in Revelation. Revelation 2 verse 10 said, Fear not of those things which thou shalt suffer when you go through trials is suffering. Oh God Almighty, when you go through trials is despair. The devil wants to get you by yourself. He wants you to lock up into a room by yourself and don't talk to nobody. He don't want you to answer any phone. He doesn't want you to go to work. He doesn't want you to come to church. He doesn't want you to love your family anymore. He wants to mash up everything. Oh God Almighty. But here, he wants to take away your job. He wants to take away your authority over your children. Oh God wants to take away your leadership. You want to take away your health. You want to take away your finances. Oh God, her relationship with God. He wants to destroy. So the word of God declares in Revelation 2, 10, fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Who is going to do that? The devil is going to cast some of you into prison. Eh? That he may be tried. And he shall have tribulation ten days. But though faithful unto death. And I. Come on now. So now you see now you're profiting now from your trials. No, you're rewarded. So from, from James come right down your suffering. But no here, no. You're rewarded.
reward. For he said, I will give thee a crown of life. Brethren, 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 go through your trials. If it's you alone coming to church, come to church. If it's you alone in your house, praise God, praise God. And if they're laughing at you while you're praising your God, walk up and down in the house like that, say your mind, go praise your God, because your reward is coming. Yeah. My God Almighty, I have a friend, and I was supposed to meet this friend at the place, and the friend drove up and reached the spot before us, and my God, the friend, and her car was got a good thing going on in her car. And my friend was just going at it, going at it. And we went and we stood up at the car window. My God Almighty. And our friend was just blazing away, worshiping God. With the head hung down around the steering wheel. Sometimes when you praise God, you need to block out everything. I come to tell you. And your appointment that you are going on. Hang down your head. Black out the people. Black out the hill. Black out who's in before you. And start praising your God. Way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keep. Light in the darkness. And you start praising him. Oh God Almighty. And he will just burst the bar of soda and set you free. Yeah. 